Hello friends and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're just going to get right into it, no nonsense. You wanted to see how I make floating shells with LED rechargeable lighting, so here goes. I cut all of my pieces down from 3 quarter inch plywood on my table saw and I am doing beveled mitered cuts on my table saw. Um, and some of them I could do on my table saw and some of them do on my miter saw. So I have all of my pieces cut and beveled. As you can see here, they are, this is a bevel, it's a 45 degree angle on the board. So the only part that isn't beveled on the, for the tops and the bottoms are um, the part that's gonna butt up against the wall. Those are completely flat, but all of the other pieces are beveled. Here you can see this is the front and this is the side. So I'm just going to be putting this together like a box. And the methods I've seen, I have one sort of drying here with the wood glue. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I did that. Um, and then I have one more thing after. Basically you just wanna use some painter's tape and you want to tape all of the seams together. Um, so that when you're trying to assemble it and waiting for the wood glue to dry and all of that, the seams don't fall apart. So I am just going to tape these. Like I would tape a box that I'm putting together. I just explained I am using painter's tape to tape the joints together temporarily while the wood glue is applied and dries and also I will be adding in some I believe I used um, half an inch brad nails or maybe five and eighths of an inch brad nails those are just to add extra strength to the box that I am building here for the floating shelf And this was my first time building floating shelves this way. This is actually the most advanced way that you can build a floating shelf based on what the internet says. Um, and if you're not afraid of making beveled mitered cuts, it's I think it's a great method and it looks really nice. But you do want to go very slowly. Um, do not rush, especially when you're putting the brad nails into the wood around the sides to secure it into place. I did find I was getting a little bit like rushy towards the end and some of the nails went through the plywood in a weird way and were poking out the top and they are very, very, very hard to get out after they're in all wonky. So take your time and make sure all of your brad nails are shooting in straight to the box. And again, I am building three shelves here. This is the longest shelf, and then there will be two of the same size that are going to be stacked on top of each other on the other side of the fireplace for the above the built-in. Next step is building the brackets. Now there are several ways you can do this. I am trying to do this as affordably as possible. I had a ton of scrap plywood, so that is what I used to build the brackets. If you don't wanna build, you can buy wall mounts, but this is the best way for me to do it with a nice snug fit. So I just cut the plywood down to fit the exact inset of the shelf, and then I am just putting on a bunch of support pieces with pocket hole screws and wood glue and as you can see here it's creating these sort of like joints and those are going to be sticking out from the wall and the box will slide right onto those joints and be really well supported once those are um, once the back of that is drilled into the studs but you do want to be sure to use wood glue and pocket hole screws to attach these joints to that back piece that's going to be on the wall and again really take your time here i did find two same thing with the pocket hole screws if they don't go in straight they go can go through the board and i may have been using the wrong size pocket hole screws so comment down below if 
again, this is my first time making floating shelves. So comment down below if, um, if, if you can tell me if I'm using the wrong size pocket hole screws, if I found that just like a little bit was going through the board um, here and there. And as you can see here, once the brackets are assembled, they just slide right into the box as long as you cut your measurements correct. And you do want to be sure to leave like an eighth of an inch um, around, around all those measurements. You don't want to measure the exact size of the box. Otherwise, it, the wood will expand and contract and it can cause problems. You want to leave room for that. So afterwards, I'm taking off the blue tape, the painter's tape. And this is after um, the wood glue is dried. I definitely waited about maybe, I think I waited 20 two to three hours, not 24 hours, two to three hours, but you can see there are barely any seams. This is a really nice way to do things if you just want it to be a nice, clean looking box. So after the wood glue dried and I took all the painter's tape off, I needed to then go in and do, fill those little cracks. Okay, so I'm in the final steps here. These have turned out so beautifully so far. I'm just going to sand and steam them. I'm going to wood condition them with this Minowax pre-stain, and then I'm going to be using um, Special Walnut by Verathane. And then I'm going to polycrylic seal these bad boys. And before I do all of that, I will sand it. I tested the stain on a piece of wood and I love it. So yeah, that's what I'm up to and I'm gonna get to it. For the sanding, I did start out with a hand sander, an angled hand sander just to get the um, crevices. You don't wanna sand too much off with the wood filler um, because it is filling a crack. And then for the tops, uh, I did use my orbital sander with a 220 grit sandpaper, which is super fine. It's just to finish the wood off. I did use sanded plywood, so I didn't have to do too much. This is just to give it a nice smooth finish. Now what I will say is I didn't do the best job sanding and it came through in the staining, which you may notice later. So, you know, that's my mistake. It happens in DIY. This was literally my first time making floating shelves, and I think considering it turned out pretty darn good, but it could have turned out even better if I had sanded better the wood filler off of basically like around the cracks on the shelves. So when you do it, be sure to sand all the wood filler off because what ended up happening is it's stained a little bit differently just around the cracks um, on the shelves, which... I'm being a perfectionist, you can barely tell, but when you're staining, I basically just put it all on with a microfiber towel and then wipe it off immediately after. So I'm about to router the groove into the bottom of my shelf so that I can fit these lights underneath there, which are these battery operated LED rechargeable lights, they're dimmable. I got them in warm white and they come in a pack of five. So three are gonna go across the bottom of the long shelf and one on each of the shorter shelves. And I'm going to router the roof. I've never used a router. However, I set the depth of the router to the height of the light so there will be a groove in there. So I'm gonna do it on a test strip first, but I just wanted to share this hack here. So this router comes with a dust back output, and I do have a shop back, which is awesome because it's keeping dust out of my garage. Um, I'm not constantly sweeping, but a hack because they don't sell these adapters uh, at the store. Uh, this is like seven dollars. It's called a PVC flex adapter. You attach this. This is you measure the size of the output and the back um, hose, and then this one is a one and a half inch diameter by no diameter by two inch. So it fits the diameter of the hose and the diameter of the output. And you literally just take a drill. You get this drill bit here, and you can tighten these and it fits onto the output of any tool. You get them in the proper size. I'm just leaving one on every single tool that is that, like my miter saw uh, that has a dust output, um, my table saw, and it's saving my life. So just wanted to share that hack with you. Get a router, these shelves.
sharing with you because I've never seen it on the internet. So I think it's a really good tip. Next up, I am... I did test the router out on a piece of plywood because, as I said, this is my first time using a router. But it went well. I figured it out. You got to go really slow. But I traced the lights onto the bottom of the shelves. I did measure center so that they were in the exact same place, front to back, side to side. And then I basically just placed the router on the um, plywood and went to town tracing around that line and also in the middle, which you will see here. It starts to create a groove. Now, the first time that I used the router, I did have to do two passes. So I went a little shallow the first time, and then the second time I set the exact depth to the height of the light, which is what I was talking about before. So the first pass is a little shallow, and the second pass is, um, is a little deeper. And I recommend these lights if you're going to use three quarter inch plywood. I already did the work of measuring to make sure that this is the right size light so you don't router through the bottom of the plywood because it, then it won't be a groove, it'll be a hole. And the good thing about this is there is a magnet piece that will sit in that groove and the lights will just slide right in there and when they are on the wall you won't even be able to see when you're looking at them straight on that there's a light in there. It'll be integrated LED rechargeable lights just like I said in the title. Ba-boom. And you can see there an example of how it's going to turn out. Okay, so I put the shelves up on the wall. Um, the lights are installed and I went ahead and just, they're not attached. They just slide on to the bracket that I attach, just like that. But I have these two koi bowls, I think they're called, from Millwork, um, Akena Millwork. It's a brand that I found on um, Amazon. And they're just supposed to go on the bottom of a shelf. I, I love the way the shelves look on their own. I just think they could use a little bit more personality. So, and there's a lot of square here. I actually initially wanted to arch these, but I decided against it. So, uh, I'm just looking to see if I like this. I don't know, it might be too like farmhouse looking, but I don't know, I think I like it. And then with the brace here, I do think, let me get a little bit closer so you can see. With the brace here, I mean the guardrail in place, I do think that that would look nice. And I think it would soften the shelves a little bit. So I'm gonna go for it. At first I was thinking maybe I wanted like brass brackets, but I kinda like, I like these. They're different and the rounded edge will soften the shelves. So I'm gonna stain these, wood conditioned stain them the same color as the, these. Um, which I'm also contemplating putting one more coat on these. Um, but yeah, and then these will get attached and I'll be done. So I think I've said this before, but anytime you're staining something, it's really important to wood condition first, just so you can avoid getting splotches or stains on, not stains, but just splotches or inconsistencies in the wood. The wood conditioner just preps everything to ensure that the stain goes on very smooth. So I use this pre-stain by Minowax, this wood conditioner, and then I'm, you can use anything really. And then I'm using the same um, special walnut by Verithane to match the shelves. Okay, so the next step in this process, I am going to add these gallery rails onto the face of the shelves so that it just creates this really nice like lip for the shelf um, and it comes with hardware to attach it so uh, you just basically um, screw in through these little plates here on to the wood in the shelf so I'm gonna get to doing that and then I'll slide them on the wall and screw them to the wall and that would be it. I will leave the exact brass gallery rails that I purchased down below. I got these off of Etsy and I'm absolutely positively in love with them. They are 
unlacquered brass gallery rails. They are a little bit tedious to attach. I did have to use an eyeglass screwdriver, but you can get one of these off of Amazon or at Target for under $3. It's just a small enough screwdriver to fit the screws that come with it. And then once those were all applied to all of the shelves, um, as you can see, the magnet is on that inset groove and the lights just slip right in there and this is so satisfying the shelf slides right on the wall and i think it looks fantastic i'm so glad i added the corbels let me know what you think down below in the comments would you have added them or not um there are three shelves total i plan to use these shorter ones for like I'm going to leave them empty for now. I'm not going to overstyle, especially because it's Christmas and I'm going to do styling on the shelves, which come back for that on Sunday. Um, I'm styling the built-ins, but um, oh, here I am just attaching these to the wall with wood screws. So you basically just make sure you screw in at the absolute back. You want to screw in to the brackets. But yeah, you guys, I'm so happy with how these turned out. I am going to style this longer one with like decor and the other ones I'm going to leave open for like cocktail stuff. Like if I want to have bottles or whatever, we are having a Christmas cocktail party. So I want to leave those open as like a bar area. And then this is the remote that comes with the lights. It controls all five the same way. There's an on and off, a nighttime function. You can dim them 50% or you can customize the dimming. Um, but it is a warm white light, which is what I prefer and what I have all over my house. And they all sort of sync up to each other. You can see that blue light blinking. That's what it's doing, I think, as they're talking to each other. And I love the charging station for these. You just kind of slide them in and it's super customized and cool. So I'll leave the lights linked down below. And yeah, you guys, that is it. Thank you so much for tuning into this video and I will see you with my Christmas built-in styling coming to you on Sunday.